You've come to Green World because your body is like the planet, polluted with toxic chemicals. Your mind is sick. You don't know what to do. We'll save you. So you can help us save the planet. You belong in a green world. Sleep and listen to my voice. Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the 1991 film Trancers 2. And this is the direct sequel to the 1985 film Trancers that I talked about last week. So this movie stars Tim Thomerson as Jack Death, of course, and then we have Helen Hunt who returns as Lena Death, Megan Ward as Alice Stillwell Death, Telma Hopkins as Reigns, Alison Croft as McNulty, and Art LaFure also as McNulty, and Biff Mannard returns as Hap Ashby, and in this one we have Jeffrey Combs as Dr. Pyle, and Richard Lynch as Dr. E. D. Wardo. And uh, so this movie was a direct-to-video release. And just to give a quick rundown of the plot. So it's been six years since the events of the first Trancer movie. And uh, by this point in time, uh, Jack Death and uh, Lena are now married. And they've been married for the last uh, few years. And uh, Biff Mannard has uh, become wealthy from... Uh, going on the stock markets and stuff like that. Uh, but Jack Death still stays very close to him because he's one of the ancestors of one of the elders from the future that uh, from the last film, uh, Whistler went back in tr time to try to kill Jack Death and all the council members' ancestors in the past to try to change the future. So Jack Death stayed behind in the past to watch over uh, Hap Ashby just in case some more transfers shows up. But it's been six years and nothing's been happening and uh, Lena's kind of itching for them to have like a more normal life and get out of uh, Ashby's mansion and just have their own place. And then everything gets turned upside down when uh, McNulty comes back through time in the body of his uh, teenage ancestor and warns him that transfers are coming back. And then some transfers actually show up and uh, try to kill Ashby and then Death has to take them out. And then uh, what happens next is uh, he actually finds out that his first wife that he thought was dead was uh, his first wife, Alice, was actually saved from a time traveling technician. And she was sent back in time to help uh, Jack Death in the past to take out Dr. Edie Wardo, who is the brother of Whistler from the first movie. And in the sequel... Uh, Wardo is using almost like this Greenpeace movement. It's, it's, it's sort of a Greenpeace movement, this environmental movement. And under the guise, he's recruiting like mentally ill people and homeless people into this hospital and then training them to be advocates for his environmental group. But what he's re that's just the cover. What he's actually doing is building an army of trancers. And Jack Death and them have to try to stop him. So that's the whole gist of the movie. So I want to talk about a couple of the stars that are in this movie. So first of all, as the main villain, Dr. Wardo, we have Richard Lynch playing him. So Richard Lynch is one of those guys, you've seen him in like so many things. He's been in a ton of things. As a kid growing up, I've seen him in a lot of movies and stuff. And he's almost always played a villain. I, I, honestly, I don't remember a time he's ever played a good guy. He's always been a villain. And uh, some of the roles he's famous for is... Uh, uh, the Sword and the Sorcerer, Invasion USA, that's one I remember fondly from my childhood, Chuck Norris movie. And uh, he's also, and he's been in uh, more movies than that, but he's also done a lot of TV show guest appearances. So he's guest starred in the original Battlestar Galactica, TJ Hooker, Blue Thunder, The A-Team, and uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Now sadly, uh, Richard Lynch passed away in 2012. But one of the roles that really sticks out to me is his guest appearance on The Next Generation. Where he played uh, the villain Baran, who was basically in command of a pirate ship. And he kept everyone under control through these devices stuck on their necks. And uh, that was the episode Gambits Part 1 and 2. And Picard was there kind of like undercover. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite, not, I don't know, it, would, it probably would probably make my top 10 favorite Next Gen episodes. But I really like that one. And uh, 
I really like uh, Richard Lynch did a good job playing the villain in that one. And also as his uh, right hand man in this movie, also playing a villain, villain, speaking of Star Trek, is Jeffrey Combs. And he's another guy that's been in just a slew of stuff. He's uh, really well known for the cult classic horror movie, The Reanimator. And now some of the stuff I've personally seen him in is Robot Jocks, The Frighteners, Fortress, and The Giver. Also, he's played countless Star Trek characters and guest appearances, uh, uh, playing all various different aliens. But the two roles that I know him most uh, for, and his my two favorite roles I like them in, is probably my favorite role that he's ever played from Star Trek is Weyoun uh, from Deep Space Nine. I really like that character. And then on Enterprise, he played the Andorian commander, Shran. So just two great actors in this movie, uh, for that, uh, just for that reason alone, you should check the film out. So how does it stack up to the original Transfers movie? Um, I'm going to admit it's a bit of a step down. I really like that first Transfers movie. And that first Transfers movie had like a film feel. Um, and it was actually released in theaters. Uh, now this one was straight to video. And it shows it's got that straight to video 90s look to it. And uh, like there were so many of these, man, just filled the shelves at video stores back in the day like at blockbuster and places like that the straight to video movies i know because i've watched a lot of straight to video films but it has that bit lower of a budget like especially when you see the future they don't in the first uh transfers movie i was really impressed that you got to see so much of the future the 23rd century of uh, los angeles for this one you don't get it. the future seat feels way cheaper and smaller and much more like a confined to a almost like a tv movie budget so you just get to see the inside of the one lab at the beginning when they uh, send the one cop back in time to contact Jack Death. So there's that. There, It's definitely looks cheaper than the first movie. Uh, Story-wise, it's pretty good, though. It's, it's, it's not bad. The whole idea of this environmental group and him using it as the main villain, Dr. Wardo, using it as a cover to recruit uh, people to experiment on them and turn them into trancers so he can create a trancer army. So I like the whole idea, and I love the two guest stars that they had. You know, uh, Richard Lynch as the main villain, and his right-hand man, Jeffrey Combs. It was awesome. It was awesome to see them in this film. Uh, so that's great. Now, the one thing, though, is uh, talking about the transfers themselves. So when the transfers first show up, they had, like, that transfer look, the zombie makeup, like they're kind of dark circles around their eyes, kind of veiny makeup. And they show them in that state like a few times but at the end of the as the movie goes on you start to see more of them and especially towards the end like the final climax when you see like almost like an army of transfers they don't have any makeup on so it's almost like the well are the transfers are they just regular humans or are they actual transfers so it kind of got a little bit confusing there in the movie so which i wish they had just used transfer makeup all the time so you know okay these aren't just regular guards these actually are transfers because they look like they're in that zombified state and uh, so, yeah, still, it, as far as dialogue goes, it's it's pretty good. Not but not quite as good as the first movie, but it is still a fun watch. And uh, you have some humorous interactions there because uh, now Jack Death is has his old wife back, Alice. And she has a new body. She's in the body of one of her ancestors, which is like a, a young woman. And uh, so she's still in love with him. But from her point of view, she thinks they're still married. But uh, she doesn't know it's been six years. And, uh, well, it's been six years for Jack Death in this film. And for those six years, he's been married to Lena. Uh, so you get some interesting uh, moments there of humor out of it. And uh, so still some pretty good one-liners in this one as well. But I would have to say this is a pretty solid sequel to the first movie. Now, the only thing about these, these types of films is... Uh, they always seem story-wise and budget-wise to these kind of movies. I kind of noticed it did the, they did the same thing with Nemesis, and they and they do it again here with Transfers. Is each movie drops a little bit more in quality to the point where it gets so bad they're unwatchable. <laughs> and uh, this kind of happens, unfortunately, with the Transfer series as well. Although they do a better job of keeping the quality more level. Uh, for their films than what uh, the Nemesis films did. Like Nemesis was quite a drop from the first movie to the second movie. Then it just plummeted right into the toilet for the fourth movie. And then uh, it got even worse for the fifth one, believe it or not. 
But uh, definitely I would recommend, this one is also on Tubi, Transfers 2. But uh, for a good, like, straight-to-video 90s sci-fi film, this definitely will do it for you. Uh, if you like, if you're a fan of those movies, this is one you definitely want to check out. If you were a fan of the first Transfers movies, I think this is a solid sequel. And I think it's worth checking out the second one. But keep in mind, it's not quite as good as the first one. It does have a, a more cheaper look. And I don't think the story is quite as solid as the first one either. Uh, but uh, the big upside to this is some of the stars they have in it with Richard Lynch playing the bad guy and Jeffrey Combs as his right-hand man. Definitely makes it work, worth it. And also one of the characters in the movie, he's like one of the... Uh, he works on one of the wards because uh, in the beginning of the movie, Jack Death's first wife, when she went back into the body of her ancestor, was actually trapped on this ward that's being run by Dr. Wardo. So one of the caretaker takers or one of the, not like a security guard, but almost like a nurse or whatever, one of the people that worked there, this guy who's like a, this really crazy character who, for all intents and purposes, is crazy, but doesn't really realize what's going on with the whole cover-up and what's really happening to all the people that sent to this hospital that they're not actually there to get any help they're just there to get transformed into trancers so you get some really weird characters in this movie stuff like that that's pretty amusing to watch so definitely check this one out if you like the first one i think you'll enjoy it it's uh, definitely wor worth a watch and it's about an hour and 25 minutes so that's everything i got to say in this video let me know what you think in the comment section and i will see you at the next one I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.